Because when you guys first hired Dan Quinn, I was really skeptical about the decision. I was like, why are these boys hiring another defensive-minded coach when the last guy they hired and Ron Rivera didn't work out? And the thing with these second-chance head coaches, especially defensive-minded guys, they don't really have good track records of panning out. Ron Rivera was a second-chance head coach who didn't work out. He had a lightning-in-the-bottle season year one with Alex Smith. But then after that, things just went left. And you look at Dennis Allen with the New Orleans Saints. He's a second-chance hire, and he doesn't really have a lot of confidence from Saints fans. And you hire Dan Quinn. You know, his defenses in Dallas were pretty good. But can he get the offense right? You know, can he make sure that Jaden Daniels reaches his potential? Because that's going to be the biggest factor in him succeeding. So how do you feel about Dan Quinn and his chances of being able to succeed with the commanders as their new head coach? Yeah, man. Um, I knew we were interested in Dan Quinn prior to us actually hiring him, but I was away at the time. So I didn't know if he was going to be the guy. I definitely agree with you. I thought we should have won offensive minded, considering the fact that our last head coach was defensive minded. And also we had number two overall pick and we were fishing for a quarterback. So I was like, man, what better pair than it to be with the new offensive minded head coach and a uh, young quarterback. But Josh Hurst decided to go defensive minded again. And, um, it had to grow on me. I never, I'm to the point where, I mean, I'm not def definitely in love with the hire, but I don't dislike the hire. I'm just, I'm in the middle of it. I'm fine with the hire because, they, as you mentioned, Dan Quinn has coached some of the best defensive uh, teams from the Legion of Boom to the Atlanta Falcons defenses there and also the Dallas Cowboys as the last couple of years. So defensively, I do feel like we're going to be really good. Offense is going to be the question. Is he going to be able to hire the right coaching staff and the right uh, offensive personnel to get the best out of Jaden Daniels with hiring Cliff Kingsbury and other guys? We'll see. But um, I definitely agree with you. I, I definitely thought we were going to go in a different direction, but with the hiring of Dan Quinn, the energy that he's bringing – um, it just feels fresh and it feels new. And I'm excited about Dan Quinn. My biggest concern with him is that I know his defenses were really good in Dallas. But anytime the Cowboys last year went up against a team that had a good offense, like the Seattle Seahawks or in the playoffs, we know when Jordan Love sent them packing early in the wall in the divisional round. I think it was. Yeah, it wasn't divisional round or the wild card. I forgot which round it was, but he sent them home early. And Jordan Love just absolutely destroyed that defense. So do you think that Dan Quinn's defenses are going to be able to be a lead in Washington? Or do you think that, you know, there are a little bit of concerns there? Because he is a defensive-minded coach, which means that you do expect the best part of this team to be the defense. Yeah, I mean, I definitely can see where you're, where you're coming from with having some letdowns. But we also got to understand... In my opinion, watching Dallas, their defenses were were let down when they didn't have their 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 full potential. Trayvon Diggs was hurt, countless other uh, injuries that happened along that defense at times. So when healthy, he definitely has one of the better units um, in the NFL. So that's just going to be the biggest thing for Washington is if if we can stay healthy and can we find the personnel to actually fit into his scheme? Because, I mean, we don't have a Michael Parsons on this team. We don't have a Trayvon Diggs on this team at this point. So, I mean, will he be able to, you know, unveil some of those stars? You know, maybe Jamin Davis in the new scheme could finally blossom. Maybe Emmanuel Forrest bounced back after having a rough rookie year. Maybe uh, Benjamin St. Juice emerges, um, you know, and Quan Martin and Mike Sanford still, who was the best pound for pound player, according to Nick Saban coming out of this year's draft. Maybe he can unveil that that kind of talent. And we may have a Deron Bland who really no one knew, um, but he blossomed into something special. Maybe we have that on this roster. Uh, it's just going to be all about can Dan Quinn, um, you know, and Joe Witt, uh, Joe Witt Jr., can they – find that out of these players and on speaking with giving his track record i really think he can like again this is a guy that coached the legion of boom the guy that coached the defenses in atlanta and obviously now most recent in dallas and he's had success everywhere he's been so i definitely have no doubt in my mind that defensively he can get this his team rolling and, and, and get the defense playing uh at a high level you hire cliff kingsbury as your offensive coordinator that's going to be the most important key to Dan Quinn's success because 
when he failed in Atlanta, he wasn't bad. We remember him taking them to the Super Bowl. They choked that 28-3, but once Kyle Shanahan left for the 49ers, that's really when he struggled. And for these defensive-minded coaches in the offensive-minded league, it's really important that you get your offensive coordinator higher right. Now, Cliff Kingsbury yeah. initially was supposed to be the OC for the Raiders, but you guys ended up outbidding them for his services. How do you feel about Cliff and his ability to get the offense right and develop Jaden Daniels? Yeah, so with Cliff Kingsbury and uh, the hire there, I definitely am in a wait and see kind of um, you know approach because specifically when it comes to his ability to get the best out of the quarterbacks, I'm not really worried about that because if you look at his track record, not only did he play quarterback himself when he played ball, but he had the track record of coaching Johnny Manziel, you know, uh, Patrick Mahomes, Kyler Murray last year, uh, Caleb Williams. So he has the track record of getting these quarterbacks to play well collegiately and some trans well transform well to the um to the NFL as the IE Patrick Mahomes been the best quarterback in football. Caleb Williams been a number one overall pick. Kyler Murray before prior injury. They were there, they were there together, you know, undefeated start off the season, you know, MVP level Kyler Murray. So he has the ability to get his quarterbacks to play well. As far as the offense as a whole, I'm in a way and see approach for that because I hear some people say he run, he's gonna run the air raid offense. Some people say it's gonna be something totally different. And I had an Arizona Cardinals fan on the channel uh, a couple weeks ago. And he talked about how, you know, the air raid offense there in, in Arizona didn't really work. It wasn't really the best. So I'm hoping maybe he learned from his time there uh, with Lincoln Rowley there at USC, something totally different, and he and he could be better and maybe learn from his mistakes. But what gives me pos- you know, positivity going into this move and giving me, you know, confidence is him just worrying about only the offense. He just has to worry about drawing up the offense and just getting the best out of this offense. He doesn't have to worry about being a head coach or coaching the whole team or worrying about challenges and stuff like that. He's literally just the offensive coordinator. And we have weapons on this team. Terry McLaurin, Austin Eckler, Brian Robinson, you know, uh, Jahan Dawson. list goes on with how talented this offense is. And Eric, uh, Adam Peters, former, um, you know, a part of that uh, San Francisco team. He's the former assistant GM over there. He built that over there, and he's had a good draft here. So I'm expecting the offense to potentially be good if we could find a way to um, get the best out of uh, our weapons. Again, we have them. You know what I'm saying, but it, again, it all falls back on the lap of uh, on the lap of Cliff Kingsbury, and if Jaden Daniels can be an ego. If you had to make any projections, if the yeah. Commanders are good, what would make what would be the difference between Dan Quinn and Ron Rivera for the reason why the Commanders could succeed under him versus why they failed or why Ron Rivera failed? Yeah, that's easy. Quarterback. Um, if you look at Ron Rivera's tenure here in Washington, we didn't, we could not find a quarterback. And the year that we felt like we found a quarterback, which is last year in Sam Howell, the coaching staff absolutely ruined the kid. So that's easy. It's the quarterback position. You look at 2020. It, it, it was uh, it was supposed to be you know uh, Dwayne Haskins and stuff like that, but he didn't he didn't end up panning out the right way. They got rest his soul. Then it was Alex Smith. Then it was Kyle Allen. Like it was just crazy there in 2020 and 2021. It was Taylor Heineke and Ryan Fitzpatrick going down. So Heineke had to come in. And in 2022, it was Carson Wentz was a was an absolute debacle. He got hurt. Taylor Heineke had to come back in again. And then like I said last year with 2023. Felt like we finally had somebody in Sam Howe and the coaches that have just ruined him. Eric Bieniemy was absolutely trash here. So it would just be quarterback. Jaden Daniels, number two overall pick, former Heisman, uh, Heisman Trophy winner. So it it would literally just be that for you, bro. I ain't even going to lie to you. Nothing hard, hardcore complex about the difference of being successful and failure between Ron Rivera and Dan Quinn. If Dan Quinn can hit on the quarterback, he's already more successful than Ron Rivera ever was here in Washington. 